Hello guys and welcome to this video about alpha blockers. So this video is a continuation to the pharmacology series on this channel and I will be explaining alpha blockers. I will start with the definition then I'm going to talk about the mechanism of action of alpha blockers then um, going to explain phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine which are both non-selective alpha blockers so i did some changes to my to my setup i added the webcam as you can see here and i also added uh, a pen just so i can explain to you guys better yeah so beside this Let's start. So we will start with the definition. So uh, alpha blockers are drugs that competitively or irreversibly blocks the alpha receptors. So competitively meaning it competes with the with the agonist, which is in this case, in the case of the alpha blockers, it is the norepinephrine. Uh, so it would compete with the norepinephrine uh, over the alpha receptor and the competition depends on the concentration irreversibly meaning that some of the alpha uh, blockers would bind to the receptor and whatever the concentration of the co of the agonist it would not lead to the unblock of the Alpha, blo alpha blocker from the receptor yeah so it is either competitive or irreversible inhibition uh, and alpha receptors activation lead to smooth muscle contraction this is like a general fact we have the alpha receptors would give us uh, the alpha uh, receptors will give us the muscle contraction so alpha contraction uh, and this is in comparison with the beta receptors that would give us the smooth muscle relaxation yes so another fact that norepinephrine has higher affinity to alpha receptors compared to epinephrine so norepinephrine have higher affinity to alpha receptors so nor is for the alpha and the epinephrine would be for the beta would high would have more affinity to the beta receptors so alpha receptors ha are alpha one receptors so we have two types of alpha receptors we have the one and we have the two so alpha 1 receptors are GQ, protein cable receptors. They are Q-type uh, and they are located on different sides on the body. Uh, they are located on the vessel walls, the iris dilator muscle, the prostate, the urethral sphincter, the pylorus and the anal sphincter. And their activation leads to contraction of these smooth muscles. So the alpha 1 receptors uh, are in different sites of the body and their activation lead to contraction. Uh, so when they activated on the vessel wall would give us a contraction of the vessel wall. And same for the other sites. The other type with the, of the alpha receptors is the alpha 2 and it is uh, a G inhibitory protein cable receptors. So it's a GI type, G inhibitory protein cable receptors, and they located on the sympathetic postganglionic presynaptic nerve terminals. And when activated, they inhibit the release of the norepinephrine to the presynaptic space. So the alpha 2 receptors are located on the uh, presynaptic nerve terminals of the noradrenaline so when there is 
an increase in the noradrenaline in these receptors would activate and they would inhibit the release of the more norepinephrine to the synaptic presynaptic space. So they work like a negative feedback loop. Yeah, so those are the two types, the one and two. Now I'm going to explain the mechanism of action of these receptors, of these drugs. So I explain first the receptors. Now I explain the drugs, so it would make more sense to you. So those drugs would block the alpha adrenal receptors and they cause a decrease in the sympathetic tone of the blood vessels. So we said earlier that the alpha receptors on the vessels and the blood vessels walls, when they activated, they would lead to contraction of these vessels. So alpha activation will give us uh, will give us a contraction of the of vessels. Yeah. So if we block these alpha receptors, uh, this would lead to a dilatation in the blood vessels. So we decrease the sympathetic tone and would give us uh, uh, a decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance because we are dilating the vessels. And when the peripheral vascular resistance decreases, it will give us a decrease in the blood pressure. And as a compensation mechanism, the heart will try to uh, increase the pulse, so we will get a reflex, a reflex tachycardia. So again, alpha blockers would block the alpha adrenal receptors uh, on the vessel wall and would, give, would decrease the sympathetic tone to the blood vessels and this would lead to dilatation of these vessels and decrease in peripheral vascular resistance and this would lead to a decrease in the blood pressure and would, the heart would, uh, would try to uh, increase the pulse so it would give us the reflex tachycardia. Now, we, uh, I'm going to talk about phenoxybenzamine. So, phenoxybenzamine is an unselective inhibitor, meaning it inhibits both the alpha-1 and the alpha-2 adrenal receptors. And it is a reversible type non-competitive inhibition. So, when this drug is introduced to the alpha receptors, it would bind to these receptors uh, and it would not unbind until the, the receptors undergo a degradation process. And that's about a 24 hours time. So the receptor would, uh, the body would synthesize new adrenal receptors in about 24 hours. And that would make the effect of this drug last about 24 hours because of the irreversible inhibition that this drug uh, do to the adrenal receptors. Now for the therapeutic uses for this drug, it is used in pheochromocytoma. Uh, pheochromocytoma is a tumor that uh, occur in the adrenal gland and it would lead to a catecholamine excess uh, and uh, patients usually get symptoms like hypertension hypertension uh, and uh, headaches and palpitations and sweatings so headaches and palpitations. So those symptoms are caused by the 
the catecholamine excess, which are the epinephrine and norepinephrine secreted by the pheochromocytoma, would work on the alpha receptors and the beta receptors. So phenoxybenzamine would give us uh, an, an irreversible inhibition to the alpha receptors and it would lead to a decrease in those symptoms when used. So when we used phenoxybenzamine, it would lead to a decrease in those symptoms. It is also used for rhinoids disease and frostbite. Uh, as we know, those are caused by vasoconstriction. So when we give phenoxybenzamine, it will lead to vasodilatation and would relieve those diseases. Uh, now for the adverse effects of this drug. So it would give us postural hypotension. Uh, that's the same mechanism for I explained for the alpha uh, blockers. So uh, when it, uh, it blocks the alpha 1 receptors, it will lead to dilatation of blood vessels and would give us hypotension uh, and it is a uh, postural type. The, the other adverse effect that happen with phenoxybenzamine is the cardiac stimulation uh, and it is like more cardiac output and possibly reflex tachycardia uh, and that's because of two mechanisms the first mechanism is the uh, reflex the baro the baro reflex action so when the uh, when the blood pressure is decreased, the barrel reflex would give uh, a signal to the heart to increase the, uh, the beats and would give us a reflex tachycardia. Uh, the other mechanism is that uh, by antagonizing the alpha receptors, the alpha 2 receptors in the heart. So, alpha 2 receptors in the heart would get antagonized by this uh, drug. So when we antagonize the alpha-2 receptors, as we know, they have inhibitory action. Uh, so they would, uh, they have, they are inhibitory type receptors. So they uh, when we inhibit the inhibitory, we will get an increase in the norepinephrine uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, going to the heart uh, and would give us the reflex tachycardia. Again, uh, when in the heart we have alpha-2 receptors uh, and as we know, the alpha-2 receptors have inhibitory action uh, so they try to decrease the norepinephrine uh, that is going to the heart but when we antagonize those receptors there would be increase in the norepinephrine and would give us reflex tachycardia. We also would get na nasal stuffness. Nasal stuffness because of the vasodilatation in the nasal vessels and it also may inhibit ejaculation uh, alpha, some alpha receptors are present in the vas, vas deferens, and when we, uh, some alpha 1 receptors are present here in the vas, and when we uh, inhibit those receptors, we will get muscle, smooth muscle relaxation, and possibly inhibiting ejaculation. Uh, and that's it for the phenoxybenzamine. Now for the phentolamine. So it's an unselective, uh, such, uh, same as the phenoxybenzamine. So it would inhibit the alpha one and the alpha two receptors. 
and it is a competitive inhibition so we'd compete with the agonist uh, uh, which is the norepinephrine uh, in, in order to inhibit the alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors competitive antagonism and because of this is a competitive type antagonism it would be lasting less than the phenoxybenzamine so it would last uh, for four hours after single injection now for the uses uh, this drug is used for pheochromocytoma same as phenoxybenzamine for the same reasons it is also used for uh, treatment of hypertensive crisis due to abrupt withdrawal of clonidine uh, clonidine is an alpha 2 agonist uh, so when uh, an alpha 2 agonist it would activate the alpha 2 and as we know the alpha 2 have inhibitory action so it would lead, lead to a decrease in the norepinephrine and in this way it would lead to a decrease in the blood pressure but when this drug is abrupt, abruptly withdrawn there would be a hypertensive crisis and fentolamine would be a good choice to treat this uh, type of crisis uh, another use for this drug is to reverse local anesthesia in soft tissue sites so uh, as we know uh, or in general uh, general facts about local anesthesia they use uh, they use drugs that lead to vasoconstriction uh, so that the anesthetic material would not be cleared by the blood very, quick, very quickly uh, and when we use the beta uh, or the alpha blockers for the for this uh, sites we we will get a uh, uh, blood more coming to the to those soft tissue type sites because we are dilating, dilate, dilating the blood vessels uh, and we reverse the local anesthesia in these regions yeah uh, adverse effects we will get cardiac stimulation for the same reasons as we with phenoxybenzamine uh, that's because we have the paro reflex ac uh, action Baro reflex action and the other mechanism is by the antagonism of the alpha 2 receptors in the heart and we will get arrhythmia and anginal pain in people who have cardiovascular diseases uh, that's because uh, because of the cardiac stimulation we would get uh, more blood and the heart need more blood and the vessels are not competent enough to bring that blood so we would get anginal pain yeah and that's it for this video next video I will be uh, I will try to explain the selective alpha uh, blockers so stay tuned for that uh, thank you guys very much for watching uh, and see you in the next one.